So this is 1.3 and this is the practice problems. So graph and off you go. Bad focus. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so this one is pretty easy. E to the X just does that. We go up three. All right, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range is three with parentheses up to infinity. So now the other one. A very good coordinate plane. Uh, it's negative two minus x minus one. Well, the minus x makes it negative one half. So now it's a down. The negative puts it down and the minus one drops it once. So here's our asymptote. It should hit at negative two. All right, so flip it down. Let's plug in zero. It's basically negative one minus one is two. So it does hit here. So it looks like it goes that. Which means domain, negative infinity to infinity, range, negative infinity to negative one. Wow, I'm on a roll. Rewrite the exponential Expression of the indicated base. Okay, well, two to the fourth equals 16. So two to the fourth to the three X equals two to the 12 X. Uh, this little trick's pretty handy. I won't say it pops up a lot in calculus, but it, it's handy. Um, two to the negative third is one eighth. So two to the negative third to the two X is two to the negative six X. And even though this trick is not that big a deal, it is handy to be this good at the math. All right, three to the negative third equals one over 27. Three to the negative third to the X equals three to the negative three X. Onwards, find the zeros algebraically, graphically. All right, well. Zero equals, and by the way, a little trick I like, y-intercept is when x equals zero. Zeros, roots, factors, solutions are when y equals zero. So that's kind of a, a nice little thing I remember. E to the x equals four, natural log of both sides. Means x equals 1.38. Six. Quick graph. And down four. Yeah, that should do it. Zero equals three minus two to the X. Two to the X equals three. LN of two equals LN of three. X equals LN of three over LN of two, which is 1.585. And if we graph that, we should see Something like that. And the asymptote is uh, up here at three. Doesn't say to draw on the asymptote, just a pretty good habit. All right. Match function on the graph. Hopefully you're on this because I'm just running with it. Three to the negative X. Negative 0 0.5 to 
to the negative x, two to the negative x minus two, negative three to the negative x, two to the x. All right, population for Nevada, calculate a problem. No, I'm not gonna show you how to do it. Compute the ratio in one year by the population of the previous year. So if we go with 2238 over 2168, we get 1.032. Now, note, this is not an answer. So if I was doing an AP problem, I would actually go with more decimal places than this. Since I'm gonna round to three, I'm gonna to go to four or even five to be accurate. It's not an AP problem per se, so yeah, just be aware. All right, if you average these out, You get 1.036, so now I will go with three decimal places. Make the year 2002 be year zero. I don't actually write the slashes through my zeros, but <clears throat> I thought that one might help. So by hand, 1 equals 2168. One point zero three six to the x by calculator. Y equals two one six five. One point zero three six. Interesting. If that's how the calculator does it. Well, we've got a slightly different original answer, so who knows what the heck the calculator does. And on calculator against the current population of Nevada. So, wow, I did this six years ago. That is actually terrifying. So in 2021, that would be year 19. Uh, that's zero, one, two, three. That doesn't seem right. Yes, it does. One, two, it's always two less. So it's 2021, there you go. Um, using the calculator, 2165 times 1.036 to the 19th equals 4239. Seems awfully big. Four, two, three, nine. By the way, it's in thousands, so four million two hundred thirty-nine thousand people. And then let's uh, let's bust it out and see what we get. So, um, population of Nevada. 2021. So they're going with 2,890,000. Interesting. So it is not continued to increase at the rate. Oops. Fascinating. Personally, I'm fascinated by it, but so yeah. Now yeah, this is a bad model for exponential. Yeah, whatever. Knoxville increasing, what well, population? Hit one million, one, one, two, three, one, two, three. And by the way, there's a good reason they don't 
that the uh, exponential growth is not necessarily accurate. I mean, you only have so much land, almost so much livable land, and things might be in a boom for a few years. And they max out certain resources and say, yeah, okay, that's it. We have nowhere further we can go. All right, solve this, we get two equals, we take the natural log, natural log, 1.0375, put the X out front, divide X equals LN of two over LN of 1.0375 equals about 18.8 .8 years. Cool math. John invests 2300 savings account, okay, yeah, compounded annually. So this is a simple interest. So 4150 equals 2300. One plus 0 0.06 to the T. 4150 and 300 LN. T ln 1.06 divide by that. T equals 10.1 years. Half-life of phosphorus is about 14 days. Okay, so off we go with our half-life calculations. All right, so hey, we don't have an original amount. Call it 100 if you want, call it 50. Long story short, you're gonna end up with one half on this side and you have an E to the negative K times 14. Uh, natural log, nice natural log on this side. They just cancel each other. So we get divided by negative 14, divided by negative 14. We get K equals 0 0.0495. Again, I'm gonna go with more decimal places than I need. And now we express it as a function. So we get y equals the original amount. Oh, they gave me the original amount, 6.6 .6 e to the 0. Point, that's negative, negative 0. 0.0495 t. So when will there be one gram, gram remaining? One equals 6.6 .6 e to the negative 0 0.0495 t over 6.6 .6 ln divided by negative 0 0.0495 t equals 38.1 days. Again, should have three decimal places. At least I remembered my units. I have units on the previous page, I forgot that I did. No, I have my years. I remembered years and years, good for me. And on the top part, I probably forgot, that's okay. Interest rate at the rate compounded daily. Okay, so we got this whole thing, original amount. 1 plus r over n to the n t. So it's going to triple. So 3 equals 1 plus 0 0.0575 daily, 365. I know there's some years with more, some years with less to the 365 t. Natural log both sides divide. Of three over natural log of 
man, I'm lazy. One plus zero point oh five seven five over three sixty five, and then I have to divide out the three sixty five. Yep, equals t. T equals nineteen point one years. All right, hopefully you're good at this because boy, you're gonna see a lot of it. Y equals 10,000 cases today. It goes down by 20%. In other words, it's 0.8. So how many years to get down to 1,000? Divide by 10,000, we'll get Oh, this is doing log. Oh, that's nice. No, I would probably just do LN. I'm a big fan of LN, even though these are log base tens that make my life easier. LN, once I divide it out, 1,000, 10,000. Put the T out front, divide by 0 0.8. Don't forget, you did take log of both sides, so log, uh, LN of 0 0.8. By the way, if you want to use log, it's going to give you the same answer. So T equals 10.3 years. And the other part of the problem says, how is it going to take to get it down to one? Well, if you do the similar math, you go with LN, one over 10 over ln 0 0.8 equals 41.3 years. Bacteria in a Petri dish, initial number, blah, blah, blah. Well, the initial amounts given in the problem. Initial number of time after six hours. B equals 100. E 0 0.693. Six. Six. Three. Nine. Four. Bacteria. I'm very cognizant of my units sometimes and then when will the number of bacteria be 200 so 200 over 100 natural log natural log v cancels yeah so you've seen this before natural log of v cancels of 0 0.693 one hour Blah, 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 blah. Six hours, T hours, yeah, so I'm checking my units. That's it, happy mathing.